Samurai Jack Season 5, Episode 6. This was a really great episode. I definitely have to say that this was my number two episode out of the season we've had so far. Uh, number one is still got to be, I'm pretty sure it was episode two, which was the story of like Jack and the Wolf where they're both kind of being stalked and Jack just taking on all the girls at once and him going into like this old temple. Visually, still probably my favorite episode. Maybe, well, maybe second favorite visually because I think the last episode was probably my favorite. Um, or the one before the last where they're inside the beast. Probably my favorite visual episode, but... That's still my favorite overall. This is definitely number two. I'm sure it's number one for people who are much bigger fans of the show and maybe, you know, you've watched it recently. It's a you know, even better experience. Um, the older seasons, I mean. Because this was reference slash nostalgia central. Outside of, like, seeing the Scotsman show up, this was, like, the moment. Like, this is the episode. I mean, that was the whole point. It starts off with Ashi, who we'll definitely get to in this episode towards the end. But... It starts off with Ashi on this airship, and so we see these creatures walk up who look like giant Jawas uh, from Star Wars. And then they take their hoods off, and I'm like, I recognize these creatures. It's been a super long time, so there are very few characters that I'm going to remember just solely based on sight. But I was like, I recognize these characters. And so we get, like, a flashback in the new animation style. It's not like they used old clips and stuff, and I'm not sure if all of these were... Like, these characters, I'm pretty sure their actual story was from an old episode, because I'm like, I remember seeing them. So... Not only do we get like a flashback, but we get a flashback with new animation. It's not like they just took, you know, a 10 year old clip and was like, here you go. And, you know, remember these characters? It was like, no, we're going to do the flashback and do it in the new animation style and everything. I was like, that's really sweet. So we get that flashback. We get, I think we get officially like one other flashback, which is with um, the creatures who were like black wolves. I really don't remember them looking like that. Uh, or I don't remember those characters at all, but I'm like, man, I wish I remember that episode because the design of them, like, possessed as, like, black wolves, I was like, that is the coolest looking design to me. It was just jet black and they had, like, the red arrows. But once again, visual styling just off the freaking charts because I was like, I kind of want just, like, a jet black figure because that just looked really sweet when they were, like, robotic wolves almost. So, you know, we get, like, a flashback of that and it's him in all these different outfits, so it was really great because we have him kind of in his normal outfit first. We have him, you know, we actually has his katana and everything. The second clip, when he's taking on the characters who are like possessed and everything, is him like in his underwear outfit where he has the, um, he's like using his uh, hearing senses because that's what they're doing as well. So he takes off all his, uh, his clothes and stuff because it's like too much noise and he just puts on a bandana so he can't see and he's using, you know, sound. And of course all he has to do is just like do this because he's so sweet and it's just like they, all the arrows reflect off each other and go out perfectly in like a triangle or they like rotate or something. And then hit all three of the wolves and he's like, boom, got it. And he saves everybody's lives. So it was like, that's really awesome. We see a boatload of villains when we get Ashi going to uh, the bar, which is a great sequence because we get to see just a ton of characters. We get to see uh, the samurai. He was like one of the other characters I remembered. I was like, I don't remember him by name. As soon as they showed the young version, I was like, oh, I remember him now. I was like, I instantly remembered him as soon as they showed that. So... They show, you know, all these different older versions of Samurai Jack when using, like, different outfits, or they just did, uh, like, different stylings. They did kind of, like, the um, old 70s black exploitation style thing, so we got to see that again with Jack, where, like, half his face is um, blue and the other half is pink, and, you know, the, the lettering and stuff just looks so silly in this, you know, old 70s style. So I was like, this is really cool. We see all the villains. Um, some of them I remember, there was, like, the dude who was yelling, that was, like, the only character I remembered out of all those characters. I was like, I kind of feel like I remember them. Certainly don't remember the Popeye <laughs> uh, robot showing up, so I'm pretty sure that was just a reference for the episode. And then, um, I think it was, like, Demogorgo. I, like, don't remember that character. Honestly, when he first showed up, it made me think of uh, and Danny Phantom, which is really funny just because the outfit, and it was just all black. Um, but it was just really funny. He was like, I came to steal the souls of the greatest warriors. And he just burned everybody. It was just like... But I clearly came to the wrong place and just left. Like, clearly this is an epic character. Like, and that's just based off the name and the style of the character and everything. I'm like, I don't remember this character, but you can tell based on how they bothered with the introduction, the reintroduction of this character, that that was an epic foe. And it was just like, mm, you guys kind of suck. I'm out of here. And he was gone. It was like, wow, they brought back a character like that just for a burn to get everybody else. So that was really awesome. Um, they had some good references in here, like I mentioned the Popeye thing. They had three other references which were amazing. Um, everybody's talking about them on Twitter. But um, when Scaramouche, who was also awesome, I'm happy that he came back because he's really funny. But Scaramouche, um, 
when he comes back and he's on the phone and he goes out to talk to the dogs, the three dogs are based off of three different characters. One is insanely obvious and it's the character to the right who is obviously just Astro from the Jetsons. I was like, that's definitely the dog from the Jetsons. So that was really funny, but some people mentioned that the other two dogs were references as well because the dog on the far left, which I was like, that dog looks familiar to me, was most likely a reference to Two Stupid Dogs, which the creator of this show, I can't think of his actual name because it's hard for me to pronounce, um, but he was like an art director or an animation lead or something like that on that show, and I was like, okay, it makes sense that that would be a reference, and the dog in the middle was most likely a reference to um, the the bull that's always attacking uh, Tom and Tom and Jerry. And I was like, that makes sense too, like all the crazy references, but the Astro one was just like, here's Astro, yeah, that's Astro, but it's the Jetsons. So I just thought that was really funny to see that. I was like, that's impossible to miss. But that was really awesome. I just love the references that they had. Um, also, right before that, we have Scaramouche, you know, having this thing where he's just a moving head. So he's trying to find his way on the boat, finally works. And so the thing that the person that he's talking to, you know, it takes him off of his head. And he says, what a weird dude is like, he looks like a talking penis. And that I could not believe it. Like, I laughed so hard when I heard that. I was like, I cannot believe they actually had him say that. And it was just, it was like, yeah, you know, that's like for most people watching, probably because it's, you know, an older audience compared to when the show first came out. So it's like, yeah, I think most people would just have that sort of comedic thing in their heads because like well, it's kind of like a talking penis it could have been like a tiny circle but it was like nope he was kind of long and kind of circle on the top I was like yeah but him actually saying it was absolutely hilarious so I couldn't believe that that happened and then after that crazy sequence is where we get Ashi going to like the big rave and everything and then that actually goes to her and her crazy transformation where we find out uh this is also probably this is probably like the number one thing on Twitter right now about the episode but apparently she was naked like the entire time. So people were like losing their minds about that because that was pretty nuts. She gets knocked into, I guess, some really, really tough ash or coal or something. And I guess it just sticks to her body. Maybe that's why she could just pull stuff out of nowhere because it's just sticking to her. Who knows? But apparently she's just been like in this insanely tough coat of coal and ash her entire life. And I guess she went back into it as she grew up, because obviously, eventually she'd grow, the coal isn't going to grow with her, it would start to crack. Or maybe not, I don't know, I mean, it's impossible. It, it's some magical thing that never breaks until she finally has to scrub it off with rock. So, whole, you know, and it's driving people nuts, the whole series now is like, she's kind of been that, you know, her having needles pulled out of her butt and so crazy stuff like that. It's like, that was kind of like right in her butt, that was like basically on her skin. Really silly, but, you know, she scrubs it off and she has, she comes out, you know, new lease on life and she goes like full nature and she's got like all the you know the leafy clothing and everything and so eventually she's able to actually get to jack and so she finds him at the gravesite where it turns out that this crazy like samurai horse spirit is a real spirit it wasn't something that he was just hallucinating it was real and it was basically like his ancestors kind of like him losing his mind kind of just saying like no you screwed up you deserve this and so he's about to commit uh seppuku but she was able to actually you know break him out of it he ends up saving her from like this final blow from the samurai or you know the ghost samurai he's able to defeat it and things are good the other spirits are like cool you earned it and so you know they kind of go away and he's like yo now we go look for my sword so i'm incredibly excited sadly we only got like four more episodes to go which is absolutely insane are we, we not like we only have four more episodes to go so that sucks but i mentioned that last time like we're, we're hit the hat we hit the halfway mark so it's crazy. It's dwindling down, but we got one more solid month worth of content for Samurai Jack, and then it's officially all said and done. But the next episode looks really exciting. It's going to be Jack kind of going um, kind of on a spiritual journey to kind of connect the magic within his blade. And I'm really excited to see that. Like the image they even showed for the promo was great, where he's like on almost like a bamboo raft and he's kind of going towards the sunset, but it's literally like him going into the sun as it grows. Once again, visuals are top-notch, so I'm really excited for that. I'm assuming we're going to get to see Ashi, and maybe we'll see the Scotsman in the next episode, because I'm like, Ashi's good, but that was literally an army in the promo, and I'm like, maybe she'll beat up like a buttload of people, and then the Scotsman, or well, technically his daughters and his ghost, will come along, and then they find Jack at the end, and it's like they all go on this grand adventure trying to get to, you know, his blade. And we still have Scaramouche out there, you know, he doesn't officially get to tell Aku what's happening, but he's still out there and he's alive if he can get, you know, to another body or something like that, then 
he'll be able to kind of uh, put things in perspective for Aku, like, hey, not too much to worry about. But there are a lot of elements to this that were absolutely phenomenal. Definitely, you know, if you're going through the whole season, this is the Nostalgia Train uh, episode without a doubt. And it was definitely good. It was definitely a lot more Jack in it than I expected because last week I thought for sure it was like, this is going to be all Ashi. And it was still a lot about her and most of Jack was through the flashbacks. But I think they did a great balance where we get to see her after the last episode. She already felt the need to actually stick around Jack. And then this episode kind of, you know, hammered it home for her. Like, yeah, he totally saved our lives. We built a giant statue for him because he saved us. We're throwing this giant rave and we make like a full on song for him because he saved our lives. And, you know, like he saved uh, the second group of people with the bow and arrows. He saved them. And the guy even mentions like he could have completed his quest. He could have destroyed our coup um, or at least gone back in time. It's not necessarily, you know. It doesn't mean he would have destroyed Aku, but it was like he could have completed his quest and kind of like gone back in time and he would have been good to go, but instead he freed us because he was kind of in the here and now. He wasn't thinking like, I might save them if I go back in time and kill Aku. It was just like, they're in trouble now, so I save them now, and that's Samurai Jack. So it was really good. They hammered it home for her, and we just got to see some epic flashbacks and, you know, kind of older costumes and stuff like that because it started off him in this actual outfit, which we haven't seen at all um in this season not counting like you know the opening of course so it was really good and also the hallucinations as well but really good episode very excited for these final four which is nuts but of course we'd love to know what you guys thought about this episode so please comment below let me know your favorite parts at least your favorite parts were um despite all the serious stuff that happened with you know everything this was a nostalgia episode so i would love to know what your favorite callback was uh for this episode whether you remember everything or you're kind of like me and you only remember some of the stuff um, I guess for me personally, it's really hard to say what my favorite callback was, especially not remembering all the characters um, and having the same amount of attachment as I would to, or I would if I like, recently rewatched all the episodes. Like I wanted to do that before the show started, I just never got the time. But for me, I think my favorite one would probably have to be uh, the second group of people that Ashi met because it wasn't like um, the first group, like the you know the giant Jawas. It was like, yeah, he rescued them and stuff, and they show him just like a, a nice little montage of him just destroying those little guys. But the second group of people, I just felt like it was such a greater impact that I think that was my favorite part. Because, um, you know, he's like, you know, none of this would have happened if it weren't for Jack saving our lives. And so that's why they built the statue. They were able to basically have generations continue onward because... They were possessed. They didn't even look remotely the same. They looked like robot wolves because they were like taken over by this magic. And it's like, I feel like that had the greatest impact on those people. So I think that's why it was my favorite callback. And the references to Popeye was just pretty awesome. And of course, the bar, for most people that remember, it might be the best moment because it's just all the different villains that he's fought. But for me, it was definitely the people he saved where it was just like, man, he, you know, especially with the line, like he could have completed his quest, but instead he saved us. So that was my favorite kind of callback moment to the series, but we'd love to know yours, and of course, we'd love to know what you guys thought about this episode in general, so please comment below, let me know, and thanks for watching.